Riviere de Siem, we've got a brand new video series and we're going to be talking about reality versus colour modulation. So what better an introduction than a reality, a real tank. Hi guys, so yeah, just as a quick introduction, we are looking at a real tank, well not really a tank actually, it's an air droppable uh, infantry fighting vehicle, but you get the point anyways. So why start off with a real vehicle? Well, we're going to be talking about colour modulation, we're actually going through building colour modulation with our M3 Lee tank, but um, we're going to discuss some of the aspects of colour modulation, its move away from reality, and why, pros, cons, and also the comparison to an actual tank, a real vehicle in 3D in reality. So if we just look at a tank in the very simplest form, it's basically a rectangle or cube in three dimensions. But even from this angle right now, I can see straight away, the lighting is basically focusing there. You can just see a line of darkness and a line on top look at the back of the turret as well and there's a shade difference there as well now this is all going to come into play when we actually start the color modulation process on our m3 lead tank so i'm going to explain that better with looking at the model but just bear those points in mind because what we're going to be talking about is something called xenenthal lighting which uh is sort of an artistic term anyways but it's um, the effect of light and shadow on three-dimensional objects specifically obviously our light source is the Sun so it's shining down at a very specific angle on this tank yeah from front to back and that's why you've got your shade effect and also you've got the harsher shadow in the shaded areas at the bottom of the tank obviously where there's a lip here we're going to get shade there and underneath the tracks let's have a look at a different angle now from the front it's quite well lit but again you see this division line between the top to bottom where obviously this glasses plate here is in shade so we're going to basically bring these real aspects into color modulation but now let's go to the tank the model tank and uh, explain these facets okay so here we are back in the studio looking at what we're going to paint the m3 lee obviously the big difference here between what we're looking at and uh, reality is the scale we're looking at a very small model aren't we we can manipulate it, we can move it around yeah however at the moment, right now, I can see that I can already see these facets of um, different lighting on the uh, bare, unpainted plastic uh, just by moving around in the light. Even though there's multiple light sources around me, I can see different shading. And that's basically we're going to recreate with this modulation style. Now, technique the technique that we're going to follow basically is as per this video that dates from 2005 uh, I've watched it so many times it's the FAQ modulation style video when this came out it just had a massive influence on, on myself I've watched it countless times I still like to watch it today I'm going to show you some clips You're probably see the corniest intro scene you've ever seen um, about the history of it as well um, this um, video was basically done by Adam Wilder and you can i'll put some links as well to his channel where he's got you know a much better explanation of modulation style because he's the sort of guy who promoted modulation style still does to this day so his models um have that very very stereotypical hard contrasting look to them um, but the actual origins of who came up with it is a little bit debatable and even when you watch the dvd it sort of says that it's credited to uh, Marion van Gils, I think, at the end, or maybe somebody else in Spain, don't know exactly who came up with it, it might have been more than one person. Regardless, we're going to apply it on this M3 Lee, which is something we need to get on with. Now, um, within the box as well, 
You've got a um, little guide here as well that uh, is basic. Also, we're, we're going to follow that. The example they give and that's sort of showcased in the DVD is a Yag Tiger. Um, the point to note as well is it's a monotone vehicle or a single color vehicle, and that's really important for uh, color modulation. You can do it on camouflage, but what's the point if the vehicle's already got multiple colors on it? It really tends to be used on uh, Dunkel Gelb, um, 4BO, German Grey, and in our case, we're going to be doing all of Drab in ours. Now, to make things a bit simpler, I've got a uh, color modulation set from Mr. Hobby, which gives us um, the basic colors for painting this. So it's got a base, it's got the actual olive drab color that you would call the, you know, de facto olive drab color. And it's got two highlight colors. So we're gonna go about painting that right now. And we'll also talk about the application, how we do some masking. And uh, I'll come straight back to you. Okay, so here's a little recap on what you just saw, which basically was the airbrush application of this Mr. Color modulation set. Better just explain, it's not my first rodeo uh, using that set. I used it previously on this Sherman M4A3 E8. And um, this is about the furthest I would usually go with any sort of 
color modulation or whatever you want to call it. So on the M3 Lee, what I found was that the actual highlight colors are within that Mr. Color set. They aren't um, contrasting enough to push it to this higher modulation style, whatever you call it. So what I tried to do, I tried to use um, Sky first of all, and actually what just was the wrong color to do it was um, too, not too light, but it just doesn't provide the right sort of warmth. So actually I used Neat Tamiya Yellow Green to create this, um, you know, strong highlighting on here. Of course, we use the mask set as well for these slogans on here. Now, if you think this looks bad, <laughs> wait till the next step okay the next step we're going to acrylics uh, i'm gonna explain that in a second okay so the next step after this airbrush application we we need to use a brush we need to use acrylics and uh, this is the first time i've done this of course i'm totally familiar with hand painting details but this time we're going to use a brush and we're going to pick out extra highlights and the highlights going to be even more gaudy than this yellow green believe me so that's a uh, i need to get over that hurdle because to me i've never done it before and it's entirely foreign to me to apply colors that are totally unnatural it's unnatural as it is now we're going to make it even more unnatural um highlighted contrasted so the first thing i need to do is make up this color and um, the colors that I've seen, they sort of resemble something like baby poo, honestly. That's how weird green we're gonna go. So I'll work on a making up a mixture and we'll get brush painting. Okay, so here we are after the brush painted application of these extruded details, as they call it. Um, okay, I've had to think a few, it didn't take long to do it, only took you know about an hour to paint these details on. And already I've got massive doubts about the way it looks already with this very strong, highly contrasted bits. The first thing I'm thinking is, uh, what do they represent? If this is meant to be xenothal lighting, um, what on earth does that represent? And I heard one guy say it was meant to be other parts that are produced in different factories, but it just doesn't make sense to me. So straight away, um, yeah, uh, I need, I'm thinking already ahead, will I be able to blend all this harsh contrast? Also, I'm thinking as well, and I don't want to be arrogant about it, I think there's a much, much better way uh, to do this but I think we'll save that for another video. Anyways, what we need to do now is simple stuff. Uh, we need to just paint in stuff normally. So all the Pioneer tools, uh, the tracks, etc., the road wheels, and then we can get on with our uh, 
oil dot filter technique. So uh, let's plow on with our normal painting. Okay, with that done, we're on to the first application of oils. Oils using the oil dot technique or oil dot filter technique. Oil dot filter is really what it is. We're gonna apply a filter. Um, the idea is, what is a filter? Okay, basically the easiest description I can come up with is, if you put on a pair of tinted sunglasses, you get a, a tint on every single color. So if you've got yellow sunglasses, everything has a yellow tone to it. Now, the difference here is that we're going to use a mixture of tones. We're going to vary the appearance of this. It's going to become, um, there's going to be an overall film of color coating the entire model, and it's going to uh, very much blend the appearance. That's a theory. Anyways, I'm quite familiar with this technique. I've got my own variations on it. Let's talk quickly about oil paints. Blacks and whites, I avoid. I find them just a little bit too strong uh, and I want to keep with warm colours. Also, the other thing that I'll not be using too much of is greens because I'm going to go back to greens on a second part of oil application. So what I'm going to be using is uh, yellows, uh, browns, very dark browns, and maybe earth tones and maybe a bit of blue. Blue has a very interesting effect on green actually. So what we do is apply onto a piece of cardboard to sort of dry out the linseed oil, apply the small dots and start fading. We're going to use some enamel thinner. Enamel thinner, I think, uh, just it dries out a little bit quicker than um, turpentine. So let's fire away with it.
Okay, just a quick recap as well. Uh, the first stage obviously was this application, the oil dot filter technique, which I've said quite familiar with. The second part, we had to leave it a period of 24 hours for those oils to dry. And then we applied neat oil paints on and we basically highlighted some more areas to actually with that yellow tone to make it even again, pop that contrast out at us. So we're going to sort of leave it there for this week. A lot of the oil work done, but we're going back to them again. Basically just run out of time because the oil drying process takes a while. But at the moment, it's got a lovely smell. It's got the aroma of the oil paints all over it. Anyways, what are your thoughts on color modulation process so far as well? So obviously I'm pushing it to this extreme color modulation following, you know, these sort of guide steps inside here. Are you in favor of it? Are you against it? Uh, write down your opinion, share them. And then of course next week uh, we want to get this uh, build completed so it can move on to building the hind which is what you guys have voted for so until next time paka ishishliva